All right, so as I said the other day, 4.3 and 4.4 are going to be primarily just the same sort of thing, except that we're going to be bumping up our, our direct proofs by teaching you a few more concepts, not a big deal. So it's the divisibility rules of n and d are integers. Okay, d not equals 0. Then uh, n is divisible by d. Oop, by D if um, and only if, right? Uh, N is equal to D sine some integer. Okay? And that's great. Okay? You could also say N is a multiple of D. As you well know, D is a factor of N. D is a divisor, or D divides N. So, you know, we know this one, D divides N. Uh, and so we say D divides N if and only if there exists an integer K such that N equals DK. And again, that's what I had up here. Okay, so kind of, an, you know, same thing you've known your whole life, not a big deal. Um, ooh, what would happen if, what if they're both positive integers? Let's call them A and B. Okay, cool. But now they're both positive. And they're both positive. So A is greater than zero, B is greater than zero. Sweet, whatever. And so then we know this, if, um, we know that if A divides B, then we know that B is greater than A or equal to A, right? In other words, you can't go in a fractional number of times if they're both truly integers obviously and uh, the only divisors of one or negative one and one that seems kind of silly to mention that but okay uh, is is division transitive of course so if a b and c are integer a b and c are integers so a divides b and b divides c then a divides c and we're not shocked by this. Okay. Um, any integer greater than one, any integer greater than one is divisible by a prime number, which is something you've done your whole life because we've done uh, prime fact or uh, your uh, prime fact, <sighs> your factor trees, your prime factorizations. Okay. And so, of course, that's something else that they do on the next page. They just say, they look, the n is equal to, and then um, p, this is some prime number to the, and they use e1. The idea is it's like, say, for instance, 2 to the third times, and maybe it's 3. Well, I think you're right, 3. Good job, stupid. Times the next prime number, which might be 3 or it might not be, and then however many times, dot, 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 p, k, e, k. That is the idea that. Uh, any number can be broken down into prime factors. So, for instance, 210. Oh, I hate doing it that way. If you like doing that way, you can knock yourself out, but I don't really care for it. Uh, 2 is 105. It goes into 105. 3 does. How many times? Uh, uh, 35 times. And and 5 goes into that 7 times. 7 and 1. So, you got 2 times 3 times 7 times 5, whatever, and you're done. Okay? Uh, not, a, not a ridiculously hard concept at all there, okay? Does, here we go, does 3 divide 3k plus 1 times 3k plus 2 times k 3k plus 3, okay? And the answer is, of course it does, because you can factor the 3 out of this last piece. So 3 goes into this thing this many times, okay? So that seems pretty straightforward, pretty easy to do, okay? Um, you know, most of these are pretty easy. Um, they're not terribly difficult. I just want you to see a few of them and kind of see how I want you to work them out. Um, <coughs> if n is equal to 4k...
uh, does does 8 divide n squared minus 1 and I have literally no idea I guess I should probably what just happened oh you freaking hippie if n equals Judas Priest where we go equals 4k plus 1 uh, does 8 divide n squared minus 1 and I have no idea what that is so let's do n squared first 4k plus 1 4k plus 1 which of course is 16k squared plus 8k plus 1 so if you did n squared minus 1 you would have k 16k squared plus 8k and the question is does 8 go into this well if I could write it as 8 times something which apparently I can then yes in fact 8 does divide it okay pretty easy to do pretty much just giving you the opportunity to work with some of these concepts in terms of direct proofs um, that's all you have to do there um, So in this statement, I want you to determine whether it's true or false. Okay, and prove the statement directly if the definition are true. Give a counterexample if it's false. So A, B, and C are integers. Okay, so if A, B divides C, then A divides C and B divides C. Okay, is this true or is this false? Okay. I don't rightly know. So I'm gonna do this here. Let's pick a few integers, shall we? So let's say let's let n equal um, two, and let's let or not a and n equal two. Let's let a equal two. Let's let b equal three, and let's let uh, c equal. Now this is six, so we need something that six goes into. So. So because 6 has to go into C, right? And so if that were the case, then you'd say, well, okay, for instance, this divides into that and goes in, um, say, 24. Now that clearly works, right? So 6 divides 24. That's great. Does 2 divide 24? Yep. Does 3 divide 24? Yep. Here's the issue. So if you chose one of that, you that you chose another one here. So for instance, you let A equal 1, which is totally fine, and B equals 2. That's fine. It doesn't really matter what you choose for C as long as it's even because clearly they'll both, but clearly it'll work. Um, so when I see that, I think to myself, hmm, yeah, that seems pretty straightforward. It's always going to work. Let's see, is there any other ones? It doesn't say anything about positive or negative integers, so that doesn't bother anything. Now, one moment, please. Okay. Um, so in this situation here, I think we can do a counter example. We can. It's true. This is a true statement. So what you could show is you could show that by con you could show that by contradiction this wouldn't work the other way around. For instance, so for instance, suppose you chose a to be any integer, b to be any integer, a times b goes into c here. That's cool. If that were true, if that were true, then um, what would end up happening? So if you have some some value, let's say, for instance, two times seven. And then you put over here, you put in 24, right? And so, I'm sorry, you put in, and you get in, you said, say, hey, look, this goes into 24, okay? For this to happen, that's 14 goes into 24. 14 does not go into 24. In other words, by contradiction, what you'd be saying is this, is that you would show the op, you could show that the opposite is not possible because uh, if A doesn't go, if A doesn't, for instance, if A divides C, that's great, but if B does not divide C, okay, then when you take A times B, they, that it also will not divide C. It cannot possibly do that. Okay, so by contradiction, okay, by by counter by contradiction, you could show that this has to be correct. Again, the idea here being is this: is that um, in this situation here, so and if this, if you said this, so for instance, A divides C, but B does not divide C. Okay, well then what you would show is is that two times this value here, seven, for instance, they did not. 
So two goes into 24, yes. Seven goes, does not go into 24, that's true. When you take the product, that product will also not go into 24. And so that is the contradiction piece of it. You just assume that it's possible to do it some other way, okay? And then you can show that it's not. You can show that it doesn't always work out. All right, th in this case, this is always a true statement. But because you show that there'd be a contradiction if you did it any other way, therefore you've proved that it is true. Again, that's what contradiction means. If you assume that this and that and the other, but then you'd have to show that it does not work out that way. And maybe another more ex more clear example of that would be this. If A divide A B divides C, okay? If you show that this goes into there, right? Divide goes into C, if you assume that that's true, <coughs> then what you could also say is this. You could say that A could be broken into some prime factors, P1 to the K1, or P1 to the E1, or whatever I guess your book has, P1, P2, E2. And you can break it out like this da, 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 as many times as you wanted to. That's true. And then, of course, um, B could also be written as some. Um, again, these E's could also be just as easily be zero. In other words, it be none of them. For instance, six is two times three. There's no five in it, for instance, and so forth. So when you put them together, you'll get these guys. Uh, in the case of if you did prime numbers, for instance, if you did five and seven, okay, then five and seven, okay, 30. So in other words, five times seven is 35. On this other side, you'd have to have 35 times 35 times some k value in order to pull this off, yes? In other words, it could be 70 or 105 or what have you, or it could be just 35. But you know that it has to be, 35 has to go into it, right, because of that. So when you break this apart, well, wait, in the case of this example, it'd be five divides into 35, true, and seven also divides into 35, that's also true. And you can look at it through prime factorizations. Same, see, you could do it with this one, two to the third times five, which of course is, uh, 40, and then you could do um, 2 squared times 3 squared times uh, 5, which is uh, 36 times 180. You have 180 and 40. And the idea here would be like, well, what it, you know, what is something that they both go into? Well, they both go into 720, for instance. 720. Okay, well, for, for each of those to go into 720, for instance, and that's just, you know, that's the one that I came to first. I could have also done 360, I guess. Uh, but here I go. So what is 720? 720 is 80 times 9. What is 80? 80 is 8 times 10 times 9. So that's 80 times 9 is, uh, is 720. So in other words, you'd have 2 to the 4th times 5 times 3 squared. So my question is, does this guy show up in here? It sure does. There's two. There's four twos. I only need three, and there's a five, so that's cool. This guy needs two twos, two threes, and a five, which I have. has to work that way. Okay. So that's another way to do it, I guess. Kind of talk yourself through it from a prime factorization standpoint. I think that's a pretty straightforward approach as well. You could convince anybody of that, I think. Okay. Um, oh, let's see here. For um, for all for all integers a, b, and c, if uh, a divides b and b divides c then um, no a divides b and a divides c wait no if a divides b and a divides c there we go then a divides 2b minus 3c okay well, that's cool and that's easy to do because if you think about a times some constant some 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 um, uh, that's what I'm looking for. Some um, integer looks like that. And then, of course, you can play the same game with C. C also must look like that. Okay, so then if you say that, we're going to have A divides, and then it's going to be 2 times AK minus 3 times uh, AM. And then you can pull an A out of all of them. And lo 
and behold, obviously, if you divide it, they cancel off. So it works. Okay. Kind of nice, kind of easy. Not a big deal there at all. Um, 4.4. Quotient remainder theorem. I mean, we know this. You've done this a million times. DQ plus R. Obviously, R is your remainder. It must be somewhere between um, 0 and D. Okay, that is what you're dividing by. So what we're saying here is the N, divi N divides by D. You get a remainder of Q. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, you get a, you get a quotient of Q. Divide that, you get a quotient of Q with a remainder of R. So D times Q plus R is N. Okay? Obviously, you could have a zero remainder. If you have a zero remainder, it went in evenly. That's beautiful. Um, that mean, by the way, that means it is a multiple, of course. And then, of course, if it ends up with a D, it didn't really end up with D because it should have just been zero again. Okay? Um, so clearly, there's no remainder. That means that it's a perfectly, it's a perfect, um, it, may, it means A, it means it divides it, and B, it means that it's a factor. And then, of course, and divides wait did I do n divides by d oh sorry and div d now you're like what does this mean well if I meant n divides d I wouldn't have used this so what this means is, is that um, uh, n divided by d is equal to q okay um, and you could also say n mod d is equal to r if and only if n is equal to dq plus r. In other words, just this the remainder, that's all that boils down to. Okay? So we've all known that. Uh, we know that it's not something we haven't done a bunch of times. Keep in mind that when we say that, um, Keep in mind that when we say that, um, um, the, the book doesn't really teach. This is where the first introduced modular arithmetic, and I've already showed it to you, so that's kind of nice. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. So, as you well know, at absolute value of x is equal to x, x bigger than or equal to zero. Obviously, it's equal to negative x, that's less than zero. Um, for all real numbers, uh, negative all, absolute value of R is less than or equal to R is less than or equal to R. That's not surprising. Okay. Um, absolute values are equal. That's all pretty straightforward. Triangle inequality. You well know this guy. Right. I don't know why there's an extra line there, but whatever. Okay, so those are all pretty straightforward. Nobody's been shocked by this at all. So what we're really saying is this. Um, so you can see a bunch of these guys here like this, for instance. Um, oh, I don't know, 62, D equals 7. So then you know that that's going to be 8 times 7 plus 6 is equal to 62. Okay, you're supposed to write it in the format N equals DQ plus R. Okay. Uh, what is 43 mod 9? Uh, well, I don't know. It goes in 4 times 36, subtract you get 7. So it's equivalent to 7. In other words, that's the remainder. Pretty easy to do. Okay. Um, here's a couple of proofs, ones just for fun. Um, so let's see here. A mod 7 is congruent to 4. Okay. Uh, what is 5A mod 7? Okay. So, think about that for a minute. In other words, when the division, when you divide by A, if you divide A by 7, you remainder 4, what happens if you take 5A divided by 7? Okay, now let's see if we can prove this out and see if it makes sense, okay? So, um, D 
you think about this for a minute, I don't know what A is, but I do know that it gives me a remainder of 4 and I divide by 7. Cool. So, for instance, let's uh, assume that we start off with 39 just for fun, okay? Just, I go with me on this one here, okay? It will actually we start at 4. Let's start with 4. We'll get to 39 in a minute. Okay, if we start with 4, 4 divided by 7 is 0 with the remainder of 4. The next one is 11. And then we got uh, 18, 25, 32, 39, right? 46. Yep, those should all be right. Now, when I go through and divide them out, it's going to give a remainder of 4. And I divide 7 goes into 4, uh, into 11. How many times? 7 goes into 11 once with the remainder of 4. These all have a remainder of 4. Four. You see that, right? Okay. Now, what if I were to take these A's and I multiply them by 5? No, 18 times 5 is... Yeah, it is 90, you stupid idiot. 125... Um, 160... Uh, boom, 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 to 195, I think, and and um, to 24, I think. Is that right? No, to 20, to to 20. No, to 30. Okay, so let's see if this makes sense. So it's 5a. So then what happens? How many times does 7 go into that? It goes in twice with the remainder of 6. 7 goes into here how many times? Uh, 7 times with the remainder of 6. 7 goes into here 12 times the remainder of 6. And so on and so on and so on. Now think about what that means is this. Okay. If I start off on my mod 7 clock, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if I start off here and I go, all right, cool. So then if I take this guy right here and I go 5 times that big, well, 5 times that big, where is it going to put me? Well, 4, if I add 7 to it, it's going to put me where? Right there. Right? So if you add 7 to 4, you get... Um, you can get it for you 11. So then here's my question. So if you take 5 times 4, where does that put me? 5 times this value that ended up here. Okay. Well, 5 times it's going to go one, um, 5 times as big. So in other words, instead of going from 0 to 4, we're going to go all the way down to 20. That's going to go 1, 2, 3. Oh, sorry. So back up three minutes. So 20, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay? 55 is going to put me around to there. Now, why is that true? Okay? Well, because, okay, what happens to, what would happen to um, that? What, 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 the way we're writing that guy is this. We know that uh, 7 times something plus 4 is equal to A, yes? Cool. So if I times this side by 5 and this side by 5, I will get 35K plus 20, right? Now, did you notice that we end up by 35 each time? That's what this is about. But 35 is the straight up divisible, straight up multiple of 7. So this guy just goes away. So then what is 20 in mod 7? 20 in mod 7 is 6 every single time. Okay? Every single time. It's kind of a neat proof, I think, anyway. It's kind of a neat to just chase the algebra on it. Um, suppose C is an integer. C mod 15 is equal to 3. Uh, what is 10C in mod 15? I don't know. Let's find out. So remember, that means that 15 times k plus 3 is equal to c, right? 
So if I wanted to do 10C, is that what I want? 10C? Yes, 10C. Times this side by 10, times this side by 10. Well, you're going to get 150K plus 30 is equal to 10C. Well, in mod 15, this is why I went around 10 times. In mod 15, this is two more full times. The answer should be zero. Let's see if that's true, just for fun, okay? So what is what is a number that gives me a three? Well, 18 does, yes? What is 18 times 10 is 180? What is 180 mod 15? Well, it turns out that 15 goes 180 evenly, meaning it gives you a zero. Is it the only one? No, of course not. No, you could, uh, you could do the same thing with uh, 33, for instance. 33 and then 330 mod 15. It's 15 going to that. 3 does. 5 does. So they both do. So check. It is going to give me a 0. So that's kind of nice. Okay. Um, by the way, did you see what I did there? I said 15, uh, that uh, 330 is divisible by 3 and it's divisible by 5. Therefore, I know it's divisible by 15. That is the whole premise of that. Um, that is the whole premise of that um, that problem we did a few minutes ago, uh, where we proved that if A B divides it, same basic premise, and then it's A divides C and, and B divides C. Okay. Um, uh, let's do this one here. So. So n mod 5 is 3. So n squared mod 5 is 4. I need to prove that that is true. Okay. Well, so that's easy enough. So let's do this. So then if I do that, it's going to be 5 times some k plus 3 is equal to n. If you squared that, you would get 25k squared plus 30k plus 9 is equal to n squared, right? Now, what do we got here? Well, we got, um, um, well, we got a god-awful mess is what we got, I guess. So we need to show that n squared mod 5 gives me a 4. Well, this is mod 5. What do you know about this piece? It's going to be 0 in mod 5 because 5 goes into 25 evenly. What about this piece right here? Well, 25 also goes into 30 evenly, so 0. Uh, 5 goes into 9 how many times? Well, it goes in once with the remainder of 4. Therefore, I have just proved that they are congruent in mod 4. Um, kind of a neat deal. I really kind of enjoy those. Eh, it's, it's kind of fun. Okay? And I think that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. Um, well, maybe one more. The product of any four consecutive integers is divisible by eight. Consecutive integers divisible by eight. So it's gonna be k times k plus one times k plus two times k plus three. We need to show that eight divides that. That seems easy enough. So that's k squared plus three k plus two times k times k plus three. I can't do everything at once, so I'm just gonna do it out the hard way, okay? That's going to be k cubed plus 3k squared plus 2k and then 3k squared plus 9k plus 6. So that's going to be k cubed plus 3k, no, k cubed plus 6k squared plus 11k plus 6, all times by k. So it's going to be k to the 4 plus k, 6k cubed plus 11k squared plus 6k. Okay, and we need to show that, that is divisible by 8. Okay? We need to show that's divisible by 8. Is that what I said? Alright, so, you know, whatever. Let's, uh, let's see how that goes. Um, how would you do that? How, how would you go about doing that? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm up, for, up for debate on that guy a little bit there. 
um, we need we know that a needs to go into it evenly. Or another way of saying that would be that eight times something uh, is equal to um, k to the fourth plus six k cubed plus eleven k squared plus six k. Yeah, I need to be able to rewrite that as this. Okay, and then of course no 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 remainder left over. Yeah, hold just a second. Okay, so that looks that you know that you're like, well, it feels right to me, Jay, but it feels it feels kind of weird too because you know there's no eight over on this side. Now, what you need to remember is is that k could very well be a factor. Of, there could be factors of eight floating around in that in that guy. So let's maybe attack it slightly differently. So what if you attacked it thusly? What if you said, for instance, you let n equal n or whatever. Let's let our first integer equal like Something like 4k plus 1. By the way, probably could have done 2k plus 1. Probably could have done any of them. Right now, let's just start with 4k, rather. So, 4k, 2k, whatever. I'm going to pick a value of k. I'm going to pick a value in front of this guy so that I know eventually I can probably divide it out. Me, personally, I probably would have, I would have maybe thought about starting with 8k. Okay, and then that totally would have worked. Um... And that, that totally would have worked, I think, too. The difference, I guess, being is if I do this guy, then the next one is 4k plus 1, and then 4k plus 2, and then, and then 4k plus 3. And the idea being is that that is um, each value of the thing, right? In other words, those are the values that can be taken on. And then, of course, if you did 4k plus 4, what is that? It just means that you went to the next value of k, which is kind of neat to think of it that way because it's the four consecutive integers. There's no reason why you can do it this way. The only reason I did it this way is so that I could show that it's going to divide out evenly this time, I think. And I probably could have just easily done 8k's. I think that may have been just maybe too easy just about. So let me try this. I'm bringing my calculator just for a good time. I'm feeling kind of lazy this afternoon. I don't want to do that. Now I'm going to use X just because it's easier. It's right there in front of me. Okay. Nice, cool. And what do you notice about all those guys? They all have a one in common. They all have an eight in common. So if you can enter the end, it goes in perfectly. You see that? Um, now again, could have shown the exact same thing, doing it a different way. The only deal, they did the reason why we wanted to choose something that had a four in it or something of that nature, is so that I would make sure I get a factor of eight coming out of it. It doesn't mean anything, because last time here we did n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3, and that's fine. The problem with that is is that we can parameterize them in any different way that I want to. So instead of on this previous page, or n, we used, didn't use n, what did we use? We used uh, just, we just used k. You see that? The problem with that is it doesn't, it doesn't take into account that, it, uh, that, that that variable could have a value of 4 in it or you know in, in, in the initial term at, in terminology piece of it okay could have also done 8k 8k plus 1 8k plus 2 seems pretty straightforward that this is going to work okay and as a matter of fact I think it would be kind of a cool way to do it is just to go in here and get rid of the 4's What a guy can do is just try this for a second. Let's get rid of this divide by at the end. You get that thing right there, which clearly is not divisible by eight in the long, in the short run, without doing a little bit of work. Now, if you just did this such that x equals four y, and you see that, and then you're like, oh, it's the same thing I had a minute ago. That's right. Then you can make this like factors of eight. See if that works. Clearly, that works because they're all factors of eight. 
Of course, then you could all divide. Well, let's try this actually. Let's put this back division back in here, divide by 8. So, of course, it goes in evenly. Isn't that nice? Um, what if you did, just for fun, what if you did a 2 right there? How will I know it didn't work? Because there's still a fractional of 2 left over. Does that make sense? So, that isn't quite right. And so, but when I say that, all I'm really saying is, is that um, I can I can parameterize these any way I want to. But for a to go in, for eight to go into them, okay, I have to start with a four. In other words, before I can get up to where, and that again, that's just changing things around. So in other words, it will not, it will work for any value of k. For instance, on this one right here, let's let k equal zero. Then I get one, two, three, four. Sweet. If I let k equal 1, that's, five, that's 4, 5, 6, 7. And if I let k equal 2, that's 8, 9, 10, 11, and so forth. In other words, it's the next four terms. That is why they went this route. Okay, so don't panic on that. I was going the right way. I had to kind of go look up my answer on account of I was getting kind of an oddball answer. But it was only getting an oddball answer because I didn't parameterize it correctly.